Hey Golf Ball Addicts, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be doing another ball review and this time I've got the Mizuno Tour and Tour X for you guys. Let's see how these golf balls compare. All right, now Mizuno is one of my favorite golf brands to test. I think that their irons have some of the most amazing feel in the industry. And I actually recently reviewed the uh, Mizuno 566, which was a two-piece golf ball. I'll have the link below for that. And I thought it was a really great two-piece model. Honestly, it performed really well. Um, so I'm excited to try these out. Uh, it's been a while since I've done, you know, a review of two different golf balls. But, you know, since these are kind of both in that same category, I figured I would just kind of show you both of them. So let's dive right in. Of course, um, like most, you know, Tor and Tor X golf balls, you have your three piece and you have your four piece. The four piece, of course, being for higher swing speeds and uh, the three piece being for more of your, you know, standard swing speed, more of just your Tor model golf ball. Um, the, the X model being for someone who might spin the golf ball a little too much because their swing speed's so high. Uh, so we'll definitely be testing that to see if that holds accurate. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into just the design of these golf balls. Both of these golf balls are very bright white. I love the look at them. Um, you can see the coating on the outside is nice and glossy. It really feels like it's going to grip a green well. Just rubbing my thumb against it there is really nice. Um, just the classic Mizuno logo on the front and uh, just a number there. The only difference is the Tor X has a blue number over the top and the regular Tor just has a regular black number. Um, but that's pretty basic. Mizuno has a pretty unique logo and they like to just kind of use that logo. Kind of a less is more thing and I like it. Um, on the side though, however, I'm not a big fan of the alignment tool. Um, you've got different fonts there, different fonts, different sizes. I don't like the arrows on the end. Not my style of alignment tool, but that's just kind of a little a little thing. But I will say it's decently symmetrical, so I do give it some points. Um, however, that's mainly for the Tor X model. The RB Tor is definitely not symmetrical. Um, I, I definitely don't like that at all. The RB maybe is a little too bold there. I think that there's better alignment tools out there. But that's really the, the gist of the design of this golf ball. It's very simplistic. Mizuno's just kind of letting their brand talk. All right, so I haven't been able to film outside as much recently, so I don't have like a lot of bee footage from out there on the chipping green like I usually do, but I did test both of these golf balls with the putter, and I will say it's definitely a change of pace. Uh, the name of the game is feedback here. There's definitely a loud click. Um, it's it's not like your firm press like some of the other golf balls I've tested. This is, this is definitely a loud click. It's more like a, a press more than anything. Um, it's meant for feedback. The whole idea is to design to basically let you know whether or not you hit it off the good part of the club or the bad part of the club. So putting, you'll know immediately if you hit it off the toe or a little inside. And if you hit it good, you'll feel a nice firm click. Um, that's decently loud as well. Um, it's not super loud by any mean, like rock, but it's definitely more rockish than some of the previous golf balls I've been tested. I think most golf balls are trying to get away from that. But Mizuno's really going all in on the feedback to try to get you, you know, better practice and, you know, more consistency in your game, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. However, if you're someone who doesn't like that click, it might end up turning you off. It, it was decently loud. As far as checkup on the green with uh, chipping, it checked up just fine. Honestly, they have some tug to them, but that's to be expected. These golf balls are the Tour Line golf balls. You know, they're urethane coated, and there's a nice thick coating on there as well, so it doesn't surprise me that there's some tug action. They're going to be able to spin and kind of do anything you need them to do on the green for sure. All right, so let's get into some numbers here. So I got to say that the feel off of these golf balls when it comes to the irons is pretty good. Mizuno just kind of knows how to give good feel, you know, whether it be their irons or driver balls, anything. It's just, it, it really feels good to use Mizuno products. They really dove into that feel. So I don't have to say much about the wedges, obviously. The wedges spin a ton. They feel really good. There's a lot of feedback. Um, this ball's going to check up no matter what club you're using. So I'm just going to dive right into the main ones we're using. Um, I saw zero issues with any type of wedge. Um, so let's get into the 7 iron. So 7 iron with the Mizuno Tour. It was 6,573. And it was 5,888 with the Tour X. And that's interesting because... Uh, usually I want my 7-iron spin around that 5,800, you know, 56, 5,800, somewhere in there. And the X actually did that for me. But the uh, the regular Tour went 65, 73, almost 6,600. And that's pretty high. That's usually like what a two-piece beginner's ball would give me. Um, so I'm interested to see if those numbers follow that suit. All right, moving right along into that 7 ball speed. Uh, you're looking at 109.3 with the Tour compared to 106.2 with the Tour X. So that's the other thing as well, is I did lose ball speed. That Mizuno Tor X is a little firmer. It's a little more clicky and a little more punishing off of off-center hits. Um, even though when you hit it in the sweet spot, it feels really good, you can definitely tell it's a firmer golf ball, and that's evident by that. I lost about three miles an hour of ball speed. So 
I think it's definitely meant for a faster swinger than I was swinging. So let's see how the distance ended up. Mizuno Tour 163.4 compared to 161. So not that bad. The, uh, the less amount of spin that the Tour X gave made up for the difference. Um, however, I will say that Honestly, ball speed does matter because you usually ball speed. The more you have, the more forgiveness you have. Uh, so that tour might end up being a little bit better for normal, you know, average run-of-the-mill players, and the X might be kind of a specialty ball. We'll see. Um, the total distance, or carry, excuse me, with the uh, seven iron, you're looking at 152.7 to 149.2, which um, honestly, it, it, I think that's that's telling right there. So my personal opinion is going to be that. I lost three yards, which might not seem like a lot, but since I had a lot less spin with the X, there's a good chance it could have rolled a little bit further and ended up, you know, I know all in all the, the total distance wasn't that much, but I'm afraid if you're trying to hit a green, you might have a little bit more control over that just regular tour model instead of the X. All right, and then launch angle. So this one's really interesting. 17.8 with the tour compared to 16.5. The X model is going to always launch a little bit lower. Um, that's a pretty significant jump there. Uh, so the tour is definitely kind of aligning with what type of golf ball I would normally play as an average to high swinger, uh, but not super high. So all in all, the 7-iron kind of turned out how I thought it would. Uh, the X is definitely meant for the faster swinger, and, and the tour, I think, is your more balanced, kind of wider variety of player. But let's see if that follows into maybe some of the lower lofted clubs. So now with the 5-iron spin, we're looking at 43.94 for the tour, 42.38 for the X. So everything's continuing along that same path. Uh, the ball speed, now this is significant here, 120.1 to 116.9. I was just able to compress the tour a little bit better and I think that shows. Total distance, we're looking at 198.8 compared to 193.2. That's to be expected. Again, I think we're about to see a different launch number um, as well as a carry number. 182.9 on the carry with the tour, 176.1 uh, carry with uh, the X. Now I'm always going to take the more distance and I'm going to take the higher launch angle because what it means is I'm carrying it further and essentially I'm able to stop on a green or even back it up if I need to. Probably not with a 5 iron I'm going to be able to back it up very much but getting it to at least stop somewhere on the green is pretty important opposed to having it roll off the back. And then getting into that launch angle 12.9 compared to 12.3 now, those are average numbers for both of those, but um, honestly, that's not as big of a difference as I thought I would see as far as launch angle. The X just still did launch a little bit lower, but not enough for me to really sway it one way or the other. All right, now getting into the three hybrid. Um, so here, there is a considerable difference. So we're looking at 36.22 spin compared to 31.77. That's a significant amount of spin difference for my hybrid. Um, that was actually, the 3177 is the lowest amount I've had with that hybrid so far. And the 3622 is up there as far as being the close. I think it's like third or something. So third, second, somewhere in there. So um, very high spin for the Tour, very low spin for the X. I think they're definitely trying to separate their balls, which is nice because... Uh, most of the time when it comes to these golf balls, the X doesn't separate itself from what I've tested. I've only tested a couple, but they don't separate themselves that well. So this is able to separate, I think, a little bit better. When we're looking at the ball speed, we are looking at 126.7 to 128.3. So interesting. This is the first time the X has actually surpassed it, and that's because with a hybrid, me swing in full speed, I'm able just to compress it a little bit better. That's not really that surprising, to be honest with you. It's pretty expected. Um, 218.8 distance with uh, Tor, 217.8 with the X. So actually, even though I was able to compress it a little bit better for ball speed, I didn't gain any distance. Uh, looking at the carry numbers, 199.3, 199.3, that's exact wash. So it ends up being close to the same. Um, and then of course we get into that launch angle and this is what's crazy. 11.6 with the Tor, 9.2 with the uh, with the X, and so even though I gained the ball speed there, even though I, I got a little bit more with that low of a launch angle, it's not gonna help an average to high swinger like me. You've gotta be swinging the club pretty darn fast in order to see uh, a benefit to your game as far as a launch angle that low. That is by far the lowest launch angle I've had with the three yet. Last but not least, we are getting into the driver, so this has gotta be one of the most important. I'm interested to see how these numbers are. And uh, if we look at the spin first, 2560 compared to 2589, very close, really no difference there, that's a wash. Uh, driver ball speed, 136.5 with the Tour, 135.4. A mile an hour difference, but all in all, nothing really you know, too crazy, nothing that would make you choose one or the other. And then if we get into the distance, 246.5, 245.6. 
Again, very close, uh, very similar. The carry, 226.3, 225.1. Um, and then last but not least, you know, we'll look at the launch angle, which was, which is 13.9 with the uh, Tor and 14.9 with the X. So that's kind of interesting that the X flew a little bit higher. Um, that's completely from left field. I don't know if that was a fluke or if that's designed, um, but all in all, yeah, it looks like there, there's a considerable difference there. It honestly looks like on the driver, they tried to keep them as close as possible, um, which is to be expected because... Ultimately, you want your driver to be consistent. I mean, no one really needs a super low angle launch driver. If, if you were going to do that, you could mess with your driver. You could change the loft. You could change the shaft. Um, you don't really need a golf ball to do that for you most of the time. All right, so real quick before we dive into what those numbers mean, um, I do want to go over the durability test. And like I expected, the Mizuno passed with pretty much flying colors. Uh, looking at these golf balls, there's just minor rips and tears. That's after about 70 to 80 shots into a net that's, you know, very unforgiving net. You can see some scrapes there that are obviously from that net, but honestly, it looks pretty good. The golf dots managed, for the most part, a couple scrapes here and there. Uh, they're not really designed to, to handle that net very well, but all in all, I was very impressed. I'd give it like a four, four and a half out of five on durability. Um, they're going to last you probably as long as you need them to, definitely a round or so um, before you end up hitting them in the woods or lake or something. So uh, very high remarks there. All right, so all in all, what do these numbers mean? Well, uh, looking at the two numbers, I would say both golf balls perform very well compared to the, the previous golf balls I've tested. I think that they're right up there with the best of the best as far as your ball speed, your distance, your spin, everything. As far as these two golf balls side by side, um, I think they hold true to what they're advertised. I think if you're a very fast swinger, 110, 115, you're going to want to play the X. Anything below that, though, I'm going to recommend you play the Tour, to be honest with you, because the Tour had some really good spin. I think it's a little bit more forgiving. I think that, you know, it fits a wider variety of a balanced audience, guys who are beginners, guys who aren't great ball strikers, guys who might be decent ball strikers. It just kind of groups them all into this, this mid area, whereas that X feels really, really detailed for a specific audience. Um, so so if you're a very fast swinger and you want to try a Mizuno golf ball, definitely go with the X. But if you're anything else and you're kind of wanting to try a Mizuno pro ball, I definitely recommend the Tour. It performed really well. Feedback is the name of the game, and I think Mizuno's really knocked it out of the park with their feel. Guys, thanks for always for being here. I really appreciate it. As always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning. Again, thank you for being here. More to come.